we've been talking for the past few weeks about relationships. How many guys? How many of you guys have uh, enjoyed our our series on relationships? Yeah, we talked about we talked about the importance of relationships. We talked about what relationships are. Last week we talked about how to build, care for, and maintain our relationships. I just want to let you guys know that we're going to continue in this series for a little bit. Originally, we started talking about relationships at the beginning of September, and we were like, okay, maybe we're going to uh, go through the month of September. We're going to extend it a few more weeks because we feel that God is doing something in our church, in our congregation, and building relationships is important. So this week, we're going to talk about relationships again. Next week... We're going to talk about relationships again, but please remember, like, like uh, Luke said earlier, we only have one service, 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock next week, so don't forget about that. The following week, we're going to talk about relationships again, and then the following week, we're going to continue on in relationships. And so, come and be a part. Come and be a part of our relationship series, what we're doing, what we're talking about. I'm really excited about uh, what we got planned for the next few weeks. Uh, next week, we're going to go over some more of the stuff that we've, we've been talking about. The week after that, we're going to talk about forgiveness and how that's such a key part of relationships and re- restoration of relationships. The week after that, we're going to have something special where we're going to talk to certain people. We're going to have kind of Uh, an interview time for the fourth evening service, and it's going to be a real good time. And so we got a lot of stuff uh, lined up for all all of our church here together. Today we're going to talk about relationships, and we're going to talk about it in just kind of a key area that's really important for us as Christians and as we make decisions and as we relate to certain people. Let me ask you guys, have you guys ever been in a situation where you have gone out to hang out with some of your friends, and these friends are maybe some of your friends from your old life before you were a Christian, and you start hanging out with them, and you spend the evening together with them, and then you get home and you realize, boy, I wasn't, I wasn't very good light and I wasn't very good salt to them. In fact, the things that they were doing, I started to 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 do the same thing. Some of the words that they were using, the language they were using, some of the stuff that they did sort of affected me and kind of got into me while I was hanging out with them. I felt like I was back in that old lifestyle again. Like before I was a Christian, you kind of start to wonder, boy, what happened there? I I, I didn't want to do those things, but then I just kind of fell into that for, for, for the evening, or I did some of those things, and boy, I was really, really disappointed yourself. Has anybody ever had that happen? Yeah, a couple of you? Okay. Thank you for your honesty. Or maybe, maybe you had good intentions. You thought to yourself, yeah, I'm going to get together with my old friends and I'm going to tell them about Jesus and give them my testimony and tell them about my new life in Jesus. And then you get to hanging out and you just kind of, mm, your kind of lips are sealed and you don't say anything. Maybe you didn't do anything like they did, but you're just kind of, it's hard to find the right situation. It's hard to be strong in your faith when you're out there with your friends. Anybody, has that ever happened to anybody before? You have good intentions, but then you just kind of talk, 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 and don't get to the real point of sharing your faith. Sometimes that happens too. Or sometimes, sometimes you do get out, but then you're hanging out with a, with a Christian friend. And yeah, maybe you're drinking coffee or having a meal together with them, and maybe they're a leader or someone who you respect, you're, they're a pastor, and you start to talk to them, and boy, something just starts to come alive inside of you, and they're sharing about their faith, and they're sharing about what the Holy Spirit told them as they were reading the Bible the other day, and 
there's something that just started to become alive inside of you as you're spending time with them. And you're like, boy, I really, really want to go and spend more time with them again because I know that that's good for my Christian walk. I know that that's good for me, for, for my spiritual health. Anybody ever had that happen before? Yeah. yeah, 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 that's good. It's good that we have influence in our lives. It's good that we have people that can speak into us and, and can help shape us and help to, to, to help us to go the right way. But today what we're going to talk about, as you can see up there, is influence. Influence. Everybody say that with me. Influence. Influence. Sometimes influence can be good. Sometimes influence can be bad. Sometimes it affects the things that, that we do. And so I have a definition for influence that is partially comes from the dictionary, partially comes from my own definition as well. But influence is when something has an effect or a shaping or a turning of one person or one thing on another person or thing. And so, so what that means is that a person can have an influence, an effect, a change, a turning on another person. The actions of one person have an effect or a change or a turning of one person on another person. So say, for example, you know, I, don't know, I always think of the, the example of, you know, if you're driving a car. So you start driving your car, but then there's this big land cruiser that's coming over beside you, and he starts to come over closer and closer and closer, and you're like, uh-oh, I better, I better move, and I better get over. And so that land cruiser is having an influence on me. He's turning because I don't want to get in an accident because I don't want to get blamed if he, if he you know, comes over and scratches the side of my car or whatever. So... That's kind of what I think about when we hear the word influence, is something that has an effect, something that has a shaping or a turning on you, okay? Now, like we said in our examples here at the beginning, sometimes an influence can be negative. Sometimes influences can be positive. But we all have influences in our lives, whether we like it or not, we have people who influence us. When you were kids, your influence is your parents. Now, sometimes, most of the time, a parent's influence on the kids is a good influence. Sometimes it can be bad, but sometimes it can be good. And a lot of times, influence comes from top down. But then, later on with our friends, influences can be peer-to-peer -peer as well. So... In a relationship, there is a flow of influence. So sometimes it can be a parent to a child. It can be a boss to an employee. It can be a teacher to a student. Or it can be a, bo I say, yeah, a boss to employee. But also, sometimes it can be peer to peer or equal to equal, coworker to coworker, friend to friend. And as Christians, it's important that we evaluate the influences that are in our lives. We talk about relationships, and relationships are so very, very important in our lives because the relationships that we have affect who we become. I heard somebody say once, show me your friends, and I will show you your future. I will show you what you'll become based on the people that you are with today. And so if we want to become, if we have goals for our life and we want to become a businessman, I would suggest start hanging out with successful business people, right? You understand that? It just kind of makes sense so that they can start to have an influence on you. Don't just, you know, sit on the bench in a park somewhere and, okay, yeah, I want to be a businessman. You don't do anything about it. Don't hang out with any successful business people. Let people have an influence on your life. So we need to evaluate the influences that we have. Okay? So it can be coworker to coworker, friend to friend, classmate to classmate. 
Influence can also be something that helps us or harms us. A parent can have a positive influence or a negative influence. I saw uh, when I was a kid, there was a, a commercial on the TV, and it was a non-smoking ad. I don't know, some of you guys may have seen it. It was a while ago, maybe not. But in the ad, the dad is telling the kid, don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke. But then the, kid, then the, then the uh, dad lights a cigarette, and he's telling the kids with his words, don't do this, don't do this. But then he's smoking a cigarette. What's the kid going to do? He's not going to follow what he says, but he, he's going to follow what he sees. Because the dad has an influence, but it's a negative influence. And it can be, usually be a positive influence. Sometimes it can be a positive influence, too, where... Okay, the parents bring their kids to church. I was talking to uh, a young couple today. They were here at the second service, and they were they're newly married. They have a young kid. Uh, the kid was, I think, probably three years old, and uh, the kid was, you know, kind of running around a little bit wild like kids do. And uh, we we're talking about the kid and. Uh, they said to me, they said, yeah, our kid is really wild. He's just running around, and he was at the back here crawling under the chairs and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, as parents are, you know, sometimes you get worried about what your kids do and kind of worried about, you know, are they going to turn out okay? They got to behave. They got to do this. They got to do that. But I told them, I said, I said, you know, when I was a kid, that was me too. I was crawling under the chairs, running around in church, falling asleep in the back, and, uh, you know, just... But I said to them, I said, it is so good that you bring your kids to church and the, just they get used to being in God's house, being in the presence of God. And they, 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 were, they were like, really, that was you? Yeah, I said, yeah, I would always do stuff like that, playing tag at the back. And, and the things that we do and the inf are the influences that we have. And... The parents also have good influences on their kids as well. So we can make sure that we are a good influence. What I want to talk about today is one of the most difficult influences that we can have and one of the most difficult things to navigate in terms of influences when, is when we talk about a friend-to-friend -friend influence. Like we said at the beginning, Sometimes we have friends who influence us the wrong way. Maybe we're out hanging out with them and we start to talk like them and think like them and the words that they say influence us and they change our hearts a little bit. What do we do in a situation like that? Do we just say, oh, I'm not going to hang out with them anymore. I'm not going to see them. Or do we just try to hang out with them to be a good Christian witness, but you're not really wit you know, being a good witness for them. You're not... Or do you just break off the, what do you do? What do you do in a situation like that where it's difficult? Or maybe you're wondering, how can I be a better influence, a better positive influence? Let's talk about the differences between positive and negative influences for a bit. And then we'll start to talk about what we can do in, 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 in these situations. A positive influence is what we can do or what someone does to help push somebody or turn somebody or influence somebody to become closer to Jesus. Someone who, who influences someone positively is someone who, through their words, through their actions, through their example, help people and encourage people to get closer to Jesus. Okay? That's a positive influence. And so everything that we do, the choices that we make, the people that we hang out with, they can turn us one way or another if we're not careful. And it's important for us to evaluate what those influences are. So when we, when we look at a positive influence, it is someone who's helping another person move closer to the things of God. For example, maybe somebody is, you know, having a hard time with hope. They're feeling hopeless in their life. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I don't have any hope for the future. A positive influence will say, no, look, this is the word of God. God says 
Maybe they use that verse that we used a little bit earlier, Hebrews 12, 2. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. Bring them hope. You might be down and discouraged right now, but God's not done with you yet. He hasn't finished the chapter on your life yet. There's more to be written. And so you can start to bring hope to people. That's a positive influence. When someone is down or discouraged, a positive influence will remind them about the things of God and speak hope into their situation. A positive influence is also something that is active. It's not just, I'm going to be there and be and act this way, but it's someone who is purposely trying to have a good influence on somebody. It's not something that, it, that just kind of happens by accident, though sometimes people will watch our lives and they will, they will see kind of what happens in our life. But when you're having an influence, you're making a decision to say, look, okay, I'm going to have a positive influence on this situation. It is an effect and it is a shaping. It's a conscious decision to act. It's a conscious decision to move, to help this person. As positive influences, we are not trying to get people to look at us more highly. Okay, that's not the point. The point is, is we're getting, we're pointing people to Jesus. Amen? We want people to get a little bit closer to Jesus, to, to say, okay, look, Jesus is our hope. Not, not this person, not that person, not me. No, it's not about me. It's about us pointing the way to Jesus. And so it's a shaping and it's turning people to Jesus. If someone is depressed, we speak hope. If someone is living in darkness, we speak the light. If someone is living in a lie, we speak the truth. We can't just be with somebody and hope that that is enough. We must make conscious decisions to have a positive influence on people. If you are a Christian and you're having a positive influence on someone who doesn't know Christ yet, keep doing that. Sometimes as a positive influence, we might feel that, you know, I'm trying and trying and praying and praying and being and spending time with this person. Keep doing it. Keep doing it because you don't know when that's going to change. You don't know when that's going to have an effect on that person. The truth is, it is having an effect on people's hearts. It is having an effect. We might not see it on the outside. We might not see their, their actions and what they're doing. And, and we might not see that heart change on the outside. But Jesus said that it always starts on the inside. And the same spirit that works in us, the same Holy Spirit that, that moves us, moves others too. And so we have to trust the Holy Spirit, be faithful to what he has asked us to do, and continue to be that positive influence. When I think about a positive influence, I think about Jesus' example. I want, let me read in uh, Luke chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. It says, after this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Okay, Levi is Matthew. And he said to Je Jesus said to him, follow me. And Jesus said, Jesus, oh, sorry. Jesus said to him, follow me. Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So here was Levi, a tax collector, a Jew working for the Romans, collecting taxes. Now, most people don't like paying taxes. Generally, we don't. But when someone comes to you who's your own, from your own country, from your own ethnic group, and they're working for another country, 
and they got to collect taxes from us for that country, it kind of feels like they're betraying us. And that's exactly how the Jews felt about tax collectors. Here's a Jew collecting taxes for the Romans from other Jews. And usually tax collectors were dishonest and they would cheat and take extra taxes. They had to take a certain amount for the Romans, but then they also took some to pad their pockets too. And so no one really liked the tax collectors. And so Jesus called Levi, who was collecting taxes, and said, come on, follow me. The amazing thing is Levi got up and just left everything. He left it all. He said, all right, I'm going to follow Jesus. And then they all went to Levi's house. They had a big party with a bunch of other tax collectors because, let's face it, that's probably all that uh, Levi knew, his other tax collectors. He didn't have any other friends besides those guys. And then everybody else who saw what Jesus was doing, they criticized Jesus. They despised Jesus. Ah, oh, look at Jesus. He's no good. He's ha hanging out with sinners and tax collectors and that. But Jesus was having a positive influence. Jesus was having a positive influence on every single one of those tax collectors. Look at the story of Zacchaeus, another tax collector. Okay? That same day that Jesus met Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus sold everything that he had to pay back all of the extra stuff that he took from other Jews. He paid it all back. He said, I'm done. I'm done being a tax collector. I'm going to be, I'm going to walk righteously. And same with Levi. Same with the disciples. Same with, same with the woman at the well. Okay, so here was another woman who, here was a woman who lived an immoral life, was shunned by her, her whole town, her whole, uh, her, her, her own village and, and everything. She was ashamed. She was full of sin and shame. But Jesus said to her, all right, come on. He said, I'm going to do a work in, in, the, in this woman's life. And Jesus had a positive influence and gave her the living water, which is the spirit of God, the hope. And this woman was the first person that Jesus revealed himself to as the Messiah. And she became transformed. Jesus had a good influence on her. All of the disciples, they were influenced by Jesus in a positive way. There is also negative influence. This is when someone influences another person to turn or to move away from the things of God and more towards the things of this world. They encourage selfishness. They encourage pride. They encourage indulging in sin and those sorts of things. These people have a negative influence. Um, in the Bible, there's a story of a, a king named Rehoboam. And he had two people, two groups of people, who were influencing his life. The first one was the older guys, and they said, do this, this, and this, and this. Then there was the younger guys who said, do this, and this, and this. Rehoboam went with the younger crowd and said, I'm going to do this. And basically what it was is, <clears throat> is they encouraged Rehoboam to be strict, to be strong, and to raise the taxes in Israel. And so he said, all right, yeah, I'll do that. That's, that's a better idea. But the, elder, the older one said, no, if you're kind to people, if you are uh, generous, you are kind, you don't work people hard, then everyone's going to love you and everyone's going to be with you. But Rehoboam weighed the two sides and he said, no, I'm going to go with the younger ones. And he did that. And that was the, the first time that the, the kingdom of Israel and Judah were divided. And so from there, we see the split of the two nations because of the influence that he listened to. Now, we've seen the negative and we've seen the positive. And in talking about relationships, it is very important that we evaluate, we stop and we evaluate 
who we are as a person and who those different influences in our lives are. Think about the different people around us. Is this person positive influence or is this person a negative influence? If they're positive, run to them. Spend time with them. If they're helping you grow in God, great. Do that more. But maybe you have some negative influences in your life. Maybe you have some people there that, well, I'm not so much of a good influence on them, but they're more of a negative influence in me than I am a positive influence to them. Jesus said we're supposed to be salt and we're supposed to be light. But if we hide our light under a bushel, what good is it? So I have a few things. Let, let me read a verse here. In 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 to 18. All right. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 14 to 18. Here we go. It says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. So in this, Paul is talking to believers. He's talking to the, the, the church in Corinth. And he's talking to believers. And so he's asking the questions. He says, first of all, he says, don't be yoked together. That means that's like, a, like when you have two cows and they have the yoke over their necks. It's this big wooden piece that connects the two of them together. And there's a, there's a, um, a law in the Old Testament that says don't yoke a donkey and a cow. A donkey and an ox. Don't put them together because it's going to be, in Khmer we say, nye, nye. it's going to be hard to, right? It's going to be crazy. It's going to be, you're not going to go the right way. One's going to be stronger than the other. One's going to be more stubborn, and they're kind of going to go here and going to go there, and it's not going to work out. You're not going to have the right, uh, you're not going to have the fruit that you want in your life. So he says, don't be yoked together. So it means there's two things that are different that are connected together. So that's in the yoking. But, let, but let's go to the next slide here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that real. I guess it's better on the, bigger on the screen there than it is at the back. So in the first one, we see a believer and an unbeliever are yoked. We see the righteousness and wickedness have something in common. Light and darkness, well, well these are all the questions. They, they, they don't have anything in common. This is what Paul is trying to say. Light and darkness can't have fellowship together. Thank you for making that bigger. That's cool. Christ and Belial can't live in harmony. The actual word there is symphony. A believer and an unbeliever can't have things in common. Temple of God and the temple of idols can't have agreement together. And so kind of what this is saying is that as a Christian, we must be careful about who we're connected with. Uh, the one example there is with Christ and Belial can't have harmony, can't have symphony together. We have a great worship band, okay? We have a great worship band, but what this is talking about here is the two of these things playing music together, playing a song together. Now, can you imagine, it says Christ and Belial having a symphony, having a, maybe you have Jesus on the keyboard over here, and Maybe the devil's on the drums. Sorry, Singley. <laughs> Can you imagine we had a new rock band or a new band with Jesus and the devil playing together? They have the same music. They're playing music together. This is basically what it's saying is that it's... There, there's no connection between the two. They can't make beautiful music together, right? They can't. They just can't. And that's the way that we need to be careful in our own lives as well. It's not saying that we can't have friends who are non-believers, but are you connected to them? Are you connected to them in you're playing the same music as them? Not necessarily the same music, but the same heart, the same words, the same spirit. Because 
when two people are playing music together, there's a, there's a, a unity. They're following the same words. They're following the same music. They're following the same rhythm. They're following the same melody together. Right? And we can't have that with the world. Now, if someone is having that influence on our lives, that means that we're compromising a little bit to be turned. And so then the question becomes, okay, if I see this going on in my life, if I see that I'm being yoked, I'm having a symphony with these people, what do I do? How do I change? And it's okay to ask these questions because we're all on a journey. Amen? We're all on a journey. We're not Jesus, okay? Jesus could go and he could have meals with tax collectors. They would have no influence on him whatsoever. But sometimes, sometimes we do have a bad influence in our life that we need to change a little bit, okay? So if there is something going on in your life, if you're realizing that you do have some negative influences in your life, there's a few things that we can do. The first and the most important step is to recognize or to understand that it is a negative influence. Okay? So the first one is to understand, to recognize that it is a negative influence. This is the biggest step because it shows a spirit of humility. Honestly, it says, okay, yeah, I understand. When I hang out with this person, I just end up thinking thoughts that I shouldn't be thinking about. They talk to me like this, and I, man, I just feel so compromised inside of me. Okay, so that's the, the, a really good first step, is to understand that. And because it shows humility, it also shows a desire to live for the things of God and to live for the positive. The second thing that... that we need to do is to is to reject that lifestyle in our hearts. So we recognize that it's a bad influence, but we also need to reject that way of living. There are some people that maybe you hang out with that their, their way of living influences you. So understand that, but also come to the realization and say, no, that's that's not right. That's against the word of God. This actually is a step of faith because you're choosing to align yourself with the Word of God rather than the things of the world or sin or the influences of other people. So this is a step of faith saying, no, this is what the Word of God says, and I'm going to agree with the Word of God. And so this can actually be another step of faith where you're understanding that and you say, okay, look, I'm not, I'm rejecting that way of living. I don't want to live that way because it's going to bring destruction. The Bible says this about it and that. I'm going to live this way. The next thing you need to do is you need to be honest. You need to be honest and decide if this is something that is too big for you to overcome at this season in life. And Sometimes we have to make a tough decision. Sometimes we have to make a tough decision. Sometimes there's people in our lives that have a negative influence on us that we, for a season, I'm not saying for the rest of your life, but maybe for a season, you need to separate yourself from them for the sake of your walk with God. Now, sometimes this can feel like you are abandoning people, you're running away from your friends. You're rejecting them. But sometimes you need to do this for your own spiritual well-being. We read a verse in 2 Corinthians 6, 18, 14 to 17. Later on, Jesus says in verse 17, he's, or God says later on, he says, Therefore, come out from them and be separate. Therefore, come out from them and be separate. So for a season in your life, there may be a time where you have to step away from that bad influence. And I'm giving you permission today to do that. If you 
feel that you need to do that, don't think of it as rejection. Don't think of it as you are abandoning people. You are, you are a steward of the spiritual life that God has given you. You are a steward of that. And you want to grow. You want to be a good influence. But sometimes if that influence is too much, you need to step back and separate yourself. You're not turning away from the relationship. You're not turning away from them as a person. You still love them. You still want the best for them. But for you personally, it's going to be something that's negative for you. And so you step away. You can say to yourself, you just say, okay, look, this is going to be for a season because I need to grow. I need to get stronger in my spiritual walk with God. And maybe later on, God will lead you back into friendship with that person again. And that's okay. Then, you can be, then you'll be stronger. And you can be that salt. And you can be that light in that person's life that, we, that God has asked you to be, that positive influence. <clears throat> and the last thing that I would suggest that you do, if this is the situation, if you have negative influence in your life, is get somebody else around you who you can be open and honest to about. Find a pastor, find a leader, find a cell group leader to talk to about this and say, hey, look, you know, I've been, I've been struggling with this. Every time I hang out with these friends, it's kind of a negative, it's kind of a downer. I, I need to spend, you know, some time repenting and, you know, getting before God because it's always negative for myself. And I want to I wanna get away from that. And to, to open up and to be accountable is a really powerful, powerful step because you're shining light on this thing that has kind of been a little bit of darkness in your life. It's also revealing something that may be a weak spot in your life that God wants you to grow in, become strong. And as you can be accountable with somebody, then you'll start to grow in this area as well. So recognize if there is a negative influence reject the way of living, be honest with yourself, and be accountable, be honest with other people. And that way you're going to begin to grow. And after that season is done, maybe God leads you back into relationship again with that person. And then you'll be stronger, and you can tell them all the great things that God's been doing in your life, how you've grown. You'll, have, you'll, you'll be a little more bold. You'll be a little more grounded with good relationships around you, good positive influence around you. And you'll be able to continue to be the salt and light. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 and 14, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world. This is what God's plan for your, for your life is. Maybe for the time being, you have to step away from negative influences. That's okay. Okay? Don't abandon people. Don't run away from people. But maybe you just need to take a step back for a season, grow, and then you can step back in to that relationship. There are lots of other things that we can do as well. Be careful of the atmosphere. Be careful of where we go, what we do. But in our relationships, the most important thing is let's evaluate where we are in our relationships. Is somebody pulling us, is somebody pulling, are we pulling somebody else up or is somebody pulling us down? Let's just evaluate. Let's just be honest. We can be real, right? We have, we can be real about who we are and our weaknesses. There's nobody who's perfect here. There's nobody who's perfect. But we can be honest. We can say, okay, look, this is, this is where I'm at for this season. Okay, I'll step away for a little bit, but then we can go back in, grow strong. We're a family. We're growing together. We're getting strong together. And God has a great plan and a great future for us. Amen. Everybody say after me. I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. Light and salt, that's influence. That's what we're called to. Let's be the salt and light that God has called us to be. Pushing people towards God, 
encouraging people, turning people just a little bit more towards God. And we're going to see a positive influence in the people around us, in our families, in our situations. Even sometimes, honestly, sometimes with our Christian brothers and sisters, we can be a, a good influence on them as well. We speak words of life. We speak words of faith. Amen? Amen. Let's commit to doing that. Let's commit to being people of good influence. It's not that you're denying everything, but you're saying, no, this is our God. This is who we serve. Reminding people of our God. Amen? Let's speak life. Speak words of life into every situation that we're in. Amen? All right, let me pray for all of us. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for every person who has influenced our lives. The truth is we are all here today because others have influenced our lives. Other people have speak, spoken to us. They've influenced us. Their actions, their words, they've all been an influence on our lives. And we thank you and we praise you for the work that you have done in us through other people. And God, today, I pray also that you would help us to evaluate all of our friendships, honestly evaluate all of our friendships, that we would honestly say, okay, is this person being a good influence or are they a bad influence in my life? And I just pray that you would speak to us right now through your Holy Spirit. Speak to us. If there's any of us here that need to make a change or make an adjustment in our lives for a season, help us to be faithful to that because you have called us to be good stewards of this life that we live. So I pray you would help us to evaluate that. Also, God, we want to commit and dedicate our lives to you today to be positive influences to those around us, to speak life, to speak transformation, to have a positive influence on the world around us, because that's how the world is being shaped and the world is being changed, oh God. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, and I pray that you would help us to be faithful to you. Lord God, this day we give our lives to you. Help us to be more like you, positive influence to those around us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 If you guys, if there's anybody here who needs prayer, we have our prayer team up here. It's going to come to the front in just a minute. If you guys want to talk to somebody or pray with somebody, uh, we have our leaders up front here. We can get some of our leaders up front. That would be cool. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, we, we're here with you guys. We're a family. There's things that you're going through, struggles that you're facing. You need some help or prayer for people who are influencing your life. Let's, let's do it. Let's agree together in prayer. Or if you have any other prayer needs, we're here for you guys today. And if not, God bless you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so much for spending time in the presence of God with us today. We love you, and we'll see you next week at 10 o'clock.